It is summertime and there are always new things to do to save money, make your life better, buy this, do that. And one of the things that I would like to pick on right now, because it is a perfect example of how myopic we tend to be when we look at homes, we're not thinking about the home as a system, which is what this channel is all about, is this article that my brother told me about from a very popular website whose motto is, do everything better. Super cooling is what we are talking about here. So how to super cool your home and why you should. The essential basis of what they're saying here is that you uh, have variable rates in most places in the US, which it means that the electricity is more expensive in the day, specifically right around the peak time, which is like the hottest time of the day, four o'clock, five o'clock, and then less expensive at night. This is part of the reason that people charge their electric vehicles at night instead of in the middle of the day, things like that. And so, uh, yes, this is going to save you money if you were to follow the directions here. The basic principle is at night, you cool your house further than you need it to go. Then you mooch off of that during the day when electricity is more uh, expensive. And the thing about that is that your house is now going to start fluctuating on purpose. This is actually pretty common. It's called a setback thermostat. Um, it's been around since like the 70s. And aside from the fact that they've kind of figured out that setback thermostats don't save as much money as they thought that they should um, when we were first making a big deal about these, let's just kind of delve into what this article has done with it. So they have taken what was a scientifically correct principle as far as energy efficiency goes only and turned it into marketing, something cool and new for you to click on. This is basically clickbait. Um, so if you have friends or family who are doing this, listen to what I'm saying and then you repeat this to them or feel free to send them the link to the video as well. But um, here are the things that they're pointing out. If a, an HVAC system, an air conditioner is specifically what we're talking about, is switched on in a house that's already pretty hot, it has to work extra hard. Now, here is a basic law of thermodynamics. Heat flows from things that are hot to things that are cold. And the hotter something is, or the colder something is, the faster that transfer happens. So in fact, when you cool your air conditioner coil down to whatever temperature it's gonna be at, let's say 40 degrees, and you pass air over that, if the air is hotter than a normal 75 degree, then that's actually better for the heat transfer to happen. So that's actually the first thing that's not technically true uh, in this article. The idea is to run your HVAC system at your highest settings at night, and you're gonna get the home down to about 60 degrees. Now, this is a major issue because you're gonna be not just putting your home through fluctuations, you're gonna be putting through such great fluctuations that you're gonna end up messing with the dew point in your house. And dew point is when things start to get wet. So if you are in some very specific places in the country, and I'm gonna to get to that because that is part of what this, the problem with this article is, uh, is it's very specific, but it's made for everybody in the whole world. Then um, you may have humidity where you live. And in fact, I was recently reached out to on this channel by somebody who lives in Phoenix and they've owned several different condominiums or apartments in that city. Every one of which had massive humidity problems in Phoenix, one of the driest places in the country. And it has to do with exhausting the interior moisture that we're all creating. So anywhere you could have humidity problems, but here specifically, let's just say all things being equal, the house doesn't have weird exhaust ventilation problems that are leading to humidity issues inside. If it's just a normal house, normal humidity. When you lower that temperature, you're gonna make things super cooled. And then when it warms back up, some surfaces, and some materials have a different, what's called thermal capacitance than others. So they're going to warm back up faster than other things do. So you'll have this weird splotchy pattern in your house in the morning when your AC kicks off and you start letting the house just reacclimatize to whatever is happening outside, which could be 100 degrees or more often nowadays. Now you're gonna have strange things happening when the sun beams in through a window and warms one particular part of the room but doesn't warm the other parts of the room. The air is gonna start interacting with that. And if you're running your fan now, you have a circulation built in that's going to brush that air up against things that might still be cold from your extreme coldness that you created overnight. Now, 
uh, the things that they're pointing out here that are the benefits are lower costs. I'm not gonna argue with that. Yes, energy efficiency, and, and I started out as an energy efficiency expert when I started my company in 2008, and I took energy efficiency really seriously. And I gotta say, I'm not there now. That I, I used to say things like, don't run your HVAC system in fan on mode. But now I tell basically all my clients to do that partly because all my clients are also putting in dehumidifiers to deal with this weird side effect that happens with your air conditioner when you do that. But when you filter the air and you clean the air, you make the home healthier and more comfortable. And this is part of what having a home is. It's supposed to be a haven. So a lot of the things that they're about to tell us are like, you don't need to be comfortable at home. You just need to deal with it. So less wear and tear. It's going to have to work really hard to cool the place down. Again, not true. Now, there are two studies that they cite right off the top here in the, one of the first few paragraphs. There's a lot of evidence. And if you click on this link, it leads us to a study that was done in Sacramento. It's called Maximizing the Benefits of Residential Pre-Cooling. Um, now, you can read this yourself, and I recommend that you do. Don't just take my word for it. But when you, what I like to do when I open up a giant white paper, because I'm frankly not the kind of guy who reads white papers. It's just not my favorite thing. I use the find feature. And so what I want to search for in this article is the issue that I have already identified, which is humidity. And if you search for the word humidity in this article, it says, uh, due to a lack of humidity, because they're talking about hot, dry climates, because this article is about Sacramento. The second instance is where they're talking, they just mention relative humidity, that the fact that it exists, that's it in out of uh, 13 pages, only two mentions. Now that 60 degree set point, I wanna see if these scientists were the ones who said, yeah, you should set your, your thermostat to 60. If I search the term 60, not only do I not get any pings on anything that they say like that, I search 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, all the way through 69, they're not saying any of those temperatures for your setback. They're saying you should set your temperature back to 70 overnight. That is a totally different conversation. Saves you a little bit of money, which is good. Sets the temperature back a little bit. Great. If you feel like doing that, by all means, feel free. But please do not take this extreme example of a 60 degree setback temperature, literally. Which, by the way, my brother did for several days and then realized, started feeling terrible uh, in the middle of it. The other study that they link to within this article is a study that is from the uh, Department of Energy, Office of Scientific and Technical Information. You can read the accepted manuscript over here. And again, all I wanna do with this 27 page white paper, which I just don't wanna read, I'm gonna skim it, is search the word humidity. And I come up with zero examples of that word within this 27 page white paper. I also search then for 60 degrees, 61, 62, 60. there's no such thing in this, in this article. So both of these scientific articles are probably talking about something completely different because the devil is in the details always when it comes to home performance. So getting back into the article here, uh, how to keep your home super cold. So what you're gonna do is, um, if you can use a programmable thermostat, that's great. That's a setback thermostat. That's what I already mentioned is here. Close the windows. Not only all windows close so that air does not circulate because of course it's hot outside during the day. Smart, but the shades and blinds down as well so that your house feels like a cave. I don't know how many of you uh, are women or live with women, but I love being married to a beautiful woman and I want her to be happy. So I'm not going to turn my house into a cave just so I can save a few bucks on my energy bill. Second thing is reduce heat sources. It says, yes, it's hot outside, but also you could make it hot inside. If you were to, for example, cook food, don't use your oven, don't use your cooktop, you'll be contributing heat to the, to the house. Also try not to use your clothes dryer and your dishwasher. Uh, and lastly, get used to it. Literally, this is their advice. Um, try not to run space heaters to make yourself more comfortable because that's gonna shoot the thing in the foot. And yes, they're right about that. But this is not really advice that we should be giving to people because it doesn't make sense in a holistic way. So please do feel free. If you have other examples of ridiculous things that you found on the internet that make no sense because they're myopic, and they actually are only looking at one aspect of the system of a home, please feel free to send them to me. Also, if you comment below or have questions, I answer those personally. Uh, like and subscribe. 
Tune in next time.